Hi guys and welcome back on Belt Sound. Today I would like to present you my artist pack. It's coming up soon on Belt Sound, including a lot of samples and presets. And what I want to do today is build a little track, like maybe a longer loop, and show you how easy it is to work with samples and presets to get to very, very fast results. So let's go. So first of all, I'm top right now because I want to give you a little overview over the artist pack. So it's including some drums and melodics, a lot of analog hi-hats made with my synthesizers. There's a lot of kick and bass loops, texture loops. We have a lot of percussions, one shots and also processed loops. So only the best processing to make the samples fit in your track right away. Then there's a lot of atmospheric loops reverse FX sequences, a lot of step sounds and some melodic sounds. But that's not everything. There will also be 10 Ableton effect racks included, as well as 20 serum presets presenting my native Cosmos sound. So whenever I start a track, I usually start with the drums, uh, especially the kick drum. So let's have a look at some samples here. We have kicks of all kind of strength and intensities. Um, and there's also a lot of rumble loops here. And also there's a lot of processed loops. So for today, I want to use one of them. So it's a little easier. They're already fully processed and ready for your production. You probably don't even really have to mix a lot here. So let's just choose a nice loop. I think I like this one for now. If you have a look at the waveform here, you can see it's already kind of well compressed. And there's also one of the texture loops on top of it. And we can easily go with this. Second of all, we probably need some hi-hats. I mostly use five to seven hi-hats in a track. But with the processed loops, it's a little easier because they mainly um, because they mainly include two or even three hi hats in different patterns. So let's have a quick listen here. start of a little quieter here and then maybe we can add some more hi-hats on top for example this one let's just drag it in here we activate the warp to make it a loop set the length to one and move it to the offbeat right All right, so one very important thing about using samples is oftentimes you wanna just change them a little bit or add your own kind of texture to it so it sounds a little more personal. So let's add an echo here and uh, let's put it to 16th notes like this. Let's just put some saturation on here before that make it a little harder. That's already kind of a nice groove. And um, to fulfill that, I think I want to use some kind of clap sound. So let's have a look here what we have in the percussion. We also have a lot of perk loops. They're kind of interesting and very, um, you know, kind of individual. So they're good to work with also for resampling and um, yeah, playing around a lot. That's uh, one of the intentions I had when making this artist pack. So let's have a listen here. Okay. 
I think I like this one. Let's see what we can do here. So I brought it one octave down because I think it then has a better place in the drums because the hi-hats take place in the upper mids and highs, obviously. So 12 uh, semitones down. And then I went to the beat algorithm and the transients. And then if you put this value down, you can kind of shorten the decay of a sound. Maybe also a clap on top. A lot of different claps here. Let's try to find a nice pattern. With claps, if you want to have two and four claps, but make them a little more interesting, I think it's always nice to start on the two and four and then try to add steps or take away steps and uh, see where you end up with this, you know? So just have fun, maybe add an echo on top or a reverb. That's what we're gonna do now. Want some ducking here so we don't get too much overlapping. All right, and I think uh, as a last thing for the drums for now, I want to add some kind of snare shots or maybe even a percussion shot. Let's check those one shots out here. Add some snare shots here and there. There's a little trick if you have this clip and then press command and hit the other clip. You can see both of them and try to find good spots for the next drum. You know, for example, the snare, maybe I want it to be here. You can move it to the C as well. And you can see now it's on the exactly right spot. I think I want a little heavier snare. Maybe one like this. Let's have a look at the melodic section now. So there's a lot of atmosphere loops and I think that's always very helpful and important for a track to have this kind of floor and background noise. So let's have a listen to some and find a good one for the track. I think actually this housey one could work very well here. So these are basically our drums. We can group them. That's the drums. And uh, now we want to build up some kind of melodic sequence around that. So we can actually have a look at some of the sample loops here. I think maybe with this one we can do something cool here to make a kind of really snappy sound. So I'm going to put that in the sampler and use it in a moment. Let's just have a listen to one of some of the sequences here. So let's try something out. I want to take the note length effect here. So I do not have to care too much about this here. And let's try to find a nice pattern. So all the steps are in C. So if we, we can just use the notes the same way we have them here. And let's have a look at the kick and bass real quick. What we have here is in F sharp. So we want to go in F sharp as well.
just had this idea of adding a little bit of Redux to this and uh, putting an LFO on the right here, finding a nice setting for this to change. So we have some kind of tonal change. So that's another thing you can do very well with uh, samples, obviously. Just put them in a sampler, add some effects, try to find some nice patterns. You can even do this with the sequence loops, for example. You can just put them in a the sampler and rearrange the, the pieces, right? I actually really like this, just want to add a little bit of reverb here to glue it all together a little more. like this is even nicer you know sometimes you have a sequence and then you leave away the kick and you hear the one like the kind of start of the sequence on a different point so definitely try that out so now it's time uh, to actually use some of the presets I would say so they're all made for serum what we want to do is grab a sound I already have one in mind let me check it's called back to the rave and it's utilizing the plus seven on the second uh, oscillator so let's try to find a nice melody here maybe it's probably going to be very ravey and again actually what we can do here is just uh, add this here and to make it not too complicated i want to go like this so that one would be here so we're not confusing <laughs> This is what the sound sounds like. And now we can start to yeah, try out stuff and maybe find a nice pattern. Also, I think you could even get this a little more melodic by extending the pattern and including more notes. So let's try that out. And for sure, what we can do now, I I would say we should play around with the velocities a little because the velocity is triggering different stuff here in the synthesizer patch. So I'm just putting up some random velocities actually, not having too much in mind. So it's actually interesting because in this sound, the velocity mapping is kind of reversed. That way we're putting like kind of an accent of the low velocities here by opening up the filter. And I think this actually fits pretty well. I think this pattern is actually much nicer than just the two steps switched. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep it like this. Right, I think it's time to add some effects here actually. And this time I'm going to use an audio effects rack. We could also do this uh, via send, but I think in this case I'm good since uh, this is only going to be a little sketch, you know, for the video. So let's see what we can do here. I definitely want it to be stereo, but also it shouldn't have too much bass because of the stereo effect. Now let's see if we can add a little reverb here. It shouldn't be too loud and also not too long uh, for this sound because there is a lot of notes um, one after another. I wanna go for the convolution reverb only and let's check some of the textures out here. I just said textures and clicked on textures, even though this is probably not the right thing here. Uh, I think we actually want a plate or maybe even a spring verb. Let's uh, try some springs actually. Mm -hmm. 
This is actually very groovy and has this kind of housey techno feeling. I like it. I actually think the reverb is uh, pretty nice for that. And um, yes, I'm quickly on, gonna apply sidechain. Guess who's back? <laughs> Did some sidechaining and um, also some little, little processing here. For example, some glue compressor on the drum group. And uh, yes, what I wanna do now, I thought of a little drop that we could do here. And I think the easiest way we could make something nice here very fast in the video is actually having some kind of drop to zero, as I tend to call it. So that's a drop basically going back to only the kick or maybe only the kick and one synth sound or anything. So um, yes, let's just put all the samples over here. I actually also made this ghost kick here. So we have a sidechain trigger and um, yes, I think we can just go from here, make a little nice automation. We might need the release for that. And then we want to go down to just a kick and maybe this one here. So that will be very intense. And this could kind of open up then into a drop uh, into, and this could kind of open up into a break part. So maybe we're around two, three, three and a half minutes here. I think it's actually already kind of cool. What we just need is um, probably to add some kind of risers and also some effects. So let's have a look here. There is actually a lot of effect racks I made. Um, you might remember from one of the last videos, the resolving rack is always nice to kind of blend over to a drop. I also um, raised the octave here right in front of the drop. That sounds like this. <laughs> And then um, going into the resolving kind of takes away the low end and also sends it to a reverb. So that's very nice here. We should have a look at the percussions here maybe. So I'm gonna show you one of the effect racks Ableton only that are also included in my artist pack. For example, this ping pong FX. So everything is mapped here to macros. And uh, let's see how we can do this. In general, what it sounds like is this. So we can make some kind of automation, raising up here, setting up a lot of intensity here right in front of the drop, also with the feedback. And this can then kind of roll out in this kind of little break here. We should add some kind of riser here. Let's go back to the artist pack and there is a lot of reverse FX. They're all very tonal, so let's see if we can find a good one. Maybe we can try this one here, also in C. So we want to go down to B, A sharp, A, G sharp, G. F sharp, right? All right, what's kind of interesting, I just forgot to put down the volume of the effect rack here, and I thought this actually kind of sounds nice here on the snare, so I kept it and lowered it when the hi hats came back, so it actually sounds like this. Some kind of very open space for a moment. I think what would be nice is some kind of opening sound on the drop, some kind of clap that uh, has a lot of reverb. So we're gonna go to the percussions again and just add a massive reverb to it. So we're gonna put this into an FX rack like this. And this is not massive enough, obviously. So let's go to only convolution and go for a hall. Let's try to find a very, very big hole.
And we can also add a little echo here to give it a little more texture. I just thought uh, it's a little nicer to drop back on the synth here as well, but just with a very, very, very low filter. And um, yes, obviously there is a lot, lot more we can do with the sound here. We can add um, the envelopes and try to play with them. We can play with the echo and reverb a little bit more. But I think this already was um, a kind of quick way to show you that using samples and presets from those packs uh, it's very helpful and it's very easy to get to results very fast. There's not only going to be an artist pack by me, but also different artists. So as soon as they're out, you should get them and play around as much as possible. Also, from this video today, all the samples I've used from my artist pack are going to be available for free download. So just follow the link in the description and let's have a final listen to what we did today. And. Thank you for watching already. Thank you, as always, and see you very soon.